Sports Beat is powered by kslsports.com. We've been here before. This group just needs to go out and work. And if they do that, the rest of it will take care of itself. We always have that chip on our shoulder, that underdog chip, so we like it like that. What is this particular team with the new pieces that have been added, what are they capable of doing on a, on a given Saturday? Hello, Aggie fans. The next 30 minutes is dedicated to you, dedicated to the defending Mountain West champions. We sat down with head coach Blake Anderson and more than a dozen of his players and staff to give you an in-depth look at the 2022 Utah State Aggies. Yeah, we also take a closer look at every position group and we'll answer questions like, is there a quarterback competition in Logan? And what do the other players and coaches in the conference actually think of this year's Utah State squad? Plus, the hype reel of all hype reels, something that'll get Aggies fans adrenaline pumping for sure before this season begins. But we'll begin this show with some preseason chatter. What the Mountain West media members think of the defending conference champions. There's not a lot of belief that Utah State can do it again. The Aggies were picked to finish third in the Mountain Division and not a single Aggie player was given all Mountain West preseason honors. Did they notice the disrespect? Yes. Do they like it? Also kind of yes. See the group message at our team this morning, so it, it, it helps for sure. Absolutely, I man. We're human. You were human. We, you know, guys want to be respected. They want to know that people uh, believe in them. Putting us third once again. None of our players on the honors or whatever. My own ways, whatever they put it out there. But um, it's okay though. That's how we, like we wouldn't want to be nowhere else. We always going to be doubted. We know that for sure. Like we always going to be the underdogs for some reason. I don't know why. The same thing happened last year. Uh, we didn't get much respect, and we had to go out and show the world we were capable of week by week. And it was like, oh, Utah State, another upset, huh? Mm. Oh, now they in the championship? How did it? Oh, the bowl game. We know we have dogs here, and we know we're capable of. We hungry once again, so I think they're fueling this. Coming off the championship last year, I feel like we're still working hard. We didn't let it go to our heads, so I feel like there's still a lot of hunger there. Okay, we were champions, but all that's over now. It's behind us. We did what we did. We had a great year. We made history, whatever, but nobody cares no more. You know, everyone kind of understands, you know, we're not kind of just flowing under the radar. Um, so we're going to get everyone's best. A lot of teams will get complacent, and it's really hard not to be when everybody's patting you on the back. There definitely is a high ex higher expectation knowing that we can do um, we can do great things and we, we can make it to a championship. Um, it's going to be extremely hard, extremely tough, and I think we're up for the challenge. I strongly b believe in each and every last one of our guys on both sides of the ball, and I feel like we're going to come back again. And I know we got a target on our back, so I'm pretty sure we're prepared for it. Well, the schedule is going to present plenty of opportunities for the Aggies to prove once again that they are worthy of the Mountain West Championship. And it won't take long to learn who this team is. They start the season a week earlier than everyone else. A home game against the Yukon Huskies on August 27th. And then if you want to be the best, you have to beat the best. And what better test than a battle with national runner-up Alabama on their home field in Tuscaloosa. The Aggies also get one last shot at BYU in Provo before that rivalry series goes on hiatus. There's another in-state battle with Weber State. As for the conference schedule, they don't have to face San Diego State, Fresno State, and Nevada, but they will have their hands full with road games at Boise, Laramie, and Fort Collins. UConn the first game, um, week zero game, Nation's going to be watching. I know UConn's got a new coach and they're really excited about them. I think they're going to really come out and, and play well. You know, we get to kick things off first. Uh, we get to get the butterflies out first, you know, have a, you know, go in and uh, get to play the game we love before anybody else and everybody's going to be watching us. I love getting to play in front of our home crowd to start the season off with. You know, week two is going to be a challenge. We know that. I mean, number one in the country. Growing up, always watching Alabama on TV, and now we get this opportunity to step on that field and play against the national powerhouse and show them what we can do as well. It's, 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 it's a blessing. You know a game I'm prepared for. You know a game we're prepared for. Of course, we're going to respect UConn as a team because uh, they're still capable of beating us, but that was a big game. Hopefully the Boise game means something. Um, if we take care of business at the end of the year, it'll mean something. And uh, I don't know, we're ready for all of it. I think it'll be really, it's a really tough schedule. The Aggies had the 22nd ranked offense last season, ranking ahead of schools like USC, Michigan, and the national champion Georgia Bulldogs. 
Much of that production came through the air. The 4,248 yards passing was 10th most in the nation. The 41 passing touchdowns, fifth best. But 78% of that production, it's gone. Justin McGriff, who had just 35 catches for 414 yards last season, is the Aggies' top returning receiver. He'll be looked to as a leader in the receiving core this fall, but Coach Anderson also added some experience from the transfer portal. Four receivers that transferred from four-year schools and another one from a JUCO, including Brian Cobbs from Maryland. Justin was a guy who um, played a little bit before we got here. I thought he took a step last year, and then I've seen him turn another corner uh, from the very beginning of the year all the way through spring. We all know Justin can be that man. And, uh, I think he will. I think he will be this year. And uh, he's a dog too, man. Like, Griff worked his butt out. But we also bring in, you know, Brian Cobb, Xavier Williams, Tyrell Vaughn, guys from the outside that immediately plugged in. And over the course of the spring, what you saw was we were just as explosive. We're gonna throw the ball in the air, you know. That's not, that's not no question about it. Everybody's gonna, you know, everybody's gonna get a piece of the ball. Logan's gonna be throwing it everywhere. You know, we got speed everywhere we're turning. You know, and we got size, you know, with a new addition to B Cobbs coming in on the other side. So, you know, we're gonna be slaying the ball around this year. Calvin Tyler Jr. got the first real opportunity of his collegiate football career to be a feature back in the offense last season. After three seasons at Oregon State, he burst onto the scene in Logan with an 884-yard season, four and a half yards per carry, and seven touchdowns. The question now, can he not only repeat that success this fall, but take his game a step further? The thing that I think he can do is he can be the every down back. Once I get my opportunity, then I got to show, like, I got to show it, so. He's a guy who's always in the building and he's watching film, so he has the opportunity to really, really be critical on, you know, the things that he needs to get better at. I just don't think he was quite ready to do that a year ago. New system, uh, the altitude, just conditioning, all those things. He wasn't quite there. He's in great shape right now, and he, he can be that guy, and we need him to be that guy this season. People didn't expect us to have that much success in our first year, so the success we had, Think about like the, this year now. Now we comfortable. Now we know the offense. So I think we're going to have a lot of success. And uh, people going to be surprised. Now, if Tyler does take that step forward this year, he'll owe a lot of credit to those guys up front. Of the seven starters that return on offense this season, four of them are on the offensive line. Three seniors in Alfred Edwards, Chandler Dolphin, and Jacob South, along with sophomore Cole Motes, a group that is without a doubt the strength of the Aggies offense going into this season. Not having to overhaul the entire front is big for us and protect the quarterback starts on the edges and all the calls come from the center. So I think the three key pieces are in, in, in place. It's going to be hard to find another big friend, uh, big long guy, has great technique. And once he gets them hands on you, he's not letting go. And even if you do, his arms are so long, if you hit them off, they're coming right back. Well, a lot of people say would say that offensive line is the most important position in football. So, you know, we, you know, if we don't go, then the offense doesn't go. So, having that experience coming back is is very, very nice to have. We got some new additions that can rotate in um, that I'm really excited about. Some young guys that can really play, um, and so I think the group's great. Yeah, that group will also be responsible for keeping Logan Bonner on his feet and his shirt clean this fall. Bonner did special things in his first season at Utah State last year. He set five school records. At the top of that list, most passing yards in a season with 3,628 and most touchdown passes in a season with 36, all while helping the Aggies become the first team in FBS history to go from one win the previous season to 11 wins. He rose to the occasion time and time again. When we needed him most, he played at his very best. When you go to San Diego to play for a title at their place, I mean, he hit on every cylinder. He hit every mark. He did that. Really, he kind of did that all season. Like Logan got that gamer. He got that gamer. Like, you can just feel the energy. Like, I was telling people, I don't know if you heard it, but like, Washington State game, like, that last drive, you can see it in his eyes. He's like, we about to win this game. You know, we, had, we still made a couple mistakes during that drive, but he kept his cool, kept throwing the ball. And, uh, yeah, that's when I feel like he really uh, proved that he – uh, could win games for it. Not really getting nervous, not getting shaken, not getting rattled, you know. Staying to the game, sticking to the office, not really getting outside of himself. Like, that's one thing I know it's a lot about Logan that makes him so, you know, such a good player as he is. 
As great as Logan was last season, it didn't end quite how he would have liked personally. Bumped early from the L.A. Bowl with an injury. So enter Cooper Lega. We all saw what he did in that game, leading the Aggies to an L.A. Bowl win over Oregon State and proving that he's very capable of leading this Aggie offense. The belief in Lega from Coach Anderson, his staff, and the players on the team increased this past spring. He took all of the first team reps as Bonner continued to recover from the knee injury. On top of that, Anderson dipped into the transfer portal, bringing over former Wyoming starter Levi Williams, the same quarterback that beat Utah State last season. Bonner's number one on the depth chart, but coach, is his job secure? It's a great room. Logan's a starter, but Cooper is right there ready for his opportunity. I tell him every day, man, that, that job's wide open. Logan knows he's got to continue to perform at a high level because Cooper and Levi and those young guys are all ready to go. I think it'll be really good for us to compete together. I think we all take from each other different things. We have different styles and stuff like that, but I think it, it makes the room better. We all can coach each other up and just not have it be awkward and weird. So like if Logan's doing something wrong, I can coach him without him getting offended. If I'm doing something wrong, he can tell me no one's feelings get hurt. You know, iron sharpens iron and you know, those guys are really great dudes and we all bring different stuff um, to the table as far as our game and stuff like that. But. Um, I'm just excited to compete against those guys. It's havoc. Um, some days we get our butts kicked. They're scary. They're relentless and they, they some monsters up there. We don't come out there to practice. They're flying around the ball and they're on us like right on rice. Their third down package is incredibly complex. They had stuff that I've never seen before. So I don't think there's really a weak spot in our defense this year. The 2021 Utah State Aggies are going to be remembered for their explosive offense and crazy comebacks. But the defense was equally impressive last year as well. Utah State held each of its final three opponents to 13 or fewer points in five of the last six opponents to 17 or fewer points. First time they had a stretch like that since 1983. Defensive coordinator Ephraim Bonda's defense also finished second in the nation in tackles for loss with 114. That aggressiveness and ability to pressure the quarterback and get off the field on third down will be key to the Aggie success once again. And it all starts up front. Byron Vaughn's hopes to continue where he left off. So does Miami transfer Patrick Joyner Jr. Senior Halle Motu Apuaka will hold down the middle. And the Aggies also welcome Nevada transfer Daniel Greshik. We're going to play a lot of bodies up front to try to stay fresh. But guys like Daniel and guys like Byron Vaughn, they're going to show up. High energy, super quick, you know, huge pass rush guys that we will we will lean on in a big, big way. We know how to get TFLs, but sacks we were not producing. So for Daniel to come in and then other D linemen, uh, guy from UCLA to come here and we we're just learning from each other. The, the D line is the anchor of our of our defense, you know, and we have a lot of talent. We have a lot of guys that are that are on this D line. Our mentality is to kill. Kill the quarterback, kill, the runner, kill whoever has the ball. So that's what makes us different. I go by something called like the warrior mindset, you know. So I treat football, a football game like it's war. The linebacker group will be led by senior AJ Vongpachan. The Aggies also welcome Washington transfer and Alta high grad MJ Tafisi. Kaleo Nevis has played in 23 games, and the Aggies are excited about redshirt freshman Sione Moa. They also welcome another Arkansas State transfer. Anthony Switzer. Uh, AJ Vong Pachong, who had a really solid, you know, year getting moving from defensive end to uh, linebacker and getting to understand that his development grew as the season went on. He played better. Uh, he really has a good grasp on it now, and his jumps in the spring have been, you know, massive. I mean, I try, you know, ultimately I always been trying to lead through example, even when, you know, I was a younger guy, just trying to look up to the older guys, but. Yeah, I try to try to lead and try to be a little more vocal this year. You know, obviously losing Justin Rice is not easy in replacing him, but we hit the portal hard again, brought in MJ Tafisi from Washington. He stepped in. He's a he's a he's a Salt Lake guy. And really the development of Sione Moa will be the factor, I think, in it. He's a super talented local guy that we're excited about. He's taking big jumps. And the Aggies have a lot to replace in the secondary. They're definitely gonna miss Shaq Bonds. Uh, Dory Jackson and Cam Lamping transferred. They do return Hunter Reynolds at safety and senior Michael Anyanwu. Andre Grayson is back and they moved a Johnny Carter to corner. They're excited about his development. And Miami transfer Gervin Hall is a newcomer to watch at safety. 
he needed a fresh start. He needed a new place. Uh, and Utah is awesome for that. Uh, there's a lot of people who've come to this state who needed a fresh start, not only just people, but just transfers in football. Uh, so he needed that, a new environment, a, a environment in the community to welcome him in. He was talking about changing my narrative and like changing my ways of how, what I used to do off the field, whatever, and changing like when I come here, I can just start fresh. I don't have to tell him much. Like he's been in the system going on five years. He's like an extra coach on the field in terms of those things. So he was a plug and play type guy. Oh, we running hit, baby. We running hit all day. So that's all I can tell you. <laughs> well, we know what the media that covers the Mountain West thinks of the defending conference champions. Not a lot of respect there. But what do the opposing players and coaches think? The ones who actually line up against the Aggies on the field. Let's just say the respect has grown quite a bit since this time last year. I've known Blake a long time. He's always been an awesome coach, an awesome human being. And uh, so it was really cool to see what he did. You know, and I think that's a cool thing about this conference, right, is it anybody can win it at any time. You know, that's one of the things that makes it fun. Blake and his staff did an outstanding job. Uh, I think you look at the number of guys that they were able to bring in from other places. Uh, how strong their contributions were, and uh, they'll be darn good again this season, too. Teams that deal with adversity well have good years, and they, they did a good job. We get a team that has high energy, has several playmakers on both sides of the ball, great quarterback, you know, that they like to spread around. You know, they like to spread the ball around. We like to spread the ball around. I think it's going to be a great game, lots of action. They get what they want. Like, they run their sets. Like, they have a good offense. They're going to drive the ball. Like, it's fast paced. So. Every single play, it's like, you got to get after it because if you're not doing your best, they're going to expose that and show you why they're, you know, the Mountain West Championships. It will be tough to top last season, but as we just showed you, the Aggies have the talent to do so. Yeah, we won't know what they'll look like this fall until they're actually on the field, but maybe this will give us an idea. It's the Utah State Hype Reel. Enjoy. So adversity came with day one. And I know we'll be dealing with some here and not afraid of it by any means. Where it starts is to develop a standard and a culture for playing harder than the opponent. I'm really, really excited about where we're headed. I think we're going to give people trouble this fall. We were able to compete and rebuild at the same time. Your blood is in, uh, in us. I treat football, a football game like it's war. I want to prove everybody that we're better than opinions. chance, right? Nobody thought but us. The relationship that Blake Anderson and Logan Bonner have is invaluable. Yeah, they're entering their seventh year together in college football. Bonner was with Anderson at Arkansas State before making the move to Utah State together. He was in his redshirt season when Arkansas State won the Sun Belt Conference Championship in 2016. But he didn't play, so being on the field when Utah State beat San Diego State for the Mountain West title last December was something special for Bonner. He's been through a lot, and uh, it was really special to see him hold that trophy up. Uh, got a little emotional with him on the sidelines, just because we've been waiting for that for six years. I, I told him I always wanted, wanted to get one, and I told him before the games that like, we're going to get one. And after that, it was just really special. It was just a, a moment of six years waiting for that one moment. It, it kind of all came out at once. All right, so predictions real quick. Not too far off. August 27th, season opener, Utah State will begin with a win over UConn. 
Alabama on the road, I'm going to have to say, it's, it's going to be an, a loss there, but an awesome opportunity to get a lot of eyeballs on that program. Yes, yeah, so here's mine. I think this team is 8-3 and three going into the Boise State game. Ooh, I like this. If they beat the Broncos on the blue turf, they'll have a chance to repeat as Mountain West Championships. They'll have a spot in that game. I think that's what it's going to come down to that weekend, Thanksgiving, against Boise State. Everything on the line for that game, that would be fantastic. And what a season it would be in year two of the Blake Anderson era.